everybody, it's Pam and Bill, a country living newbie, custom decor in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Welcome to Sunday Night Live on the Dixie Belle Paint page. Hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend. I know it's coming to a close. We appreciate you spending your Sunday evening with us here. A uh, couple things first off, there's some links in the description. Make sure you get on that chalk mineral paint um, enthusiast group and join that. Tons of inspiration there. If you're looking for your nearest Dixie Bell retailer, you can click on the link in there. If you don't have one, we are happy to help you out. So say hi to Bill behind the camera. Hi, Bill. We are a husband and wife team. We own a small business here in Middle Tennessee, just a little bit south of Nashville. So if you're ever in the area, please come see us. All right. You know what? Just come see us. Doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> Everybody just come. Yeah. <laughs> come Everybody's welcome. <laughs> we'll go honky tonk. Here we are. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> But you need an excuse for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're not painting furniture tonight. We, um, we're here every Sunday night. We usually do some kind of furniture. Um, every now and then we throw in um, kind of a craft or small project. And that's what we're doing tonight. And we are going full on farmhouse tonight. So uh, we're painting on metal. We are using silk screen stencils. We are using moonshine metallics. Skilk? Skilk? Skilk screen? Silk screen stencil metallics, and something else. Oh, and paint, <laughs> Dixie Belle paint, <laughs> let's use that too. All right, so uh, you can paint Dixie Belle paint on metal. It will stay, it will not come off. I brought this in to show you, we have had this for years, and it only has Dixie Belle paint on it. There's no sealer, there's no spray, there's no nothing. It sits outside. Now, I, I did wash it off because it was pretty, it was pretty dirty. Um, but the paint, it, it's not going anywhere. Like, it is on there. So you can use the stuff outside, guys. It'll stay. So that was just kind of to show you. That's probably three years old. And it's been outside the, the entire time. So we're good to go. All right. Uh, if you guys have questions, please put them in the comments. Bill tries to get them as they're scrolling. And if he misses them, Dixie Bell will catch them. Or I'll get them uh, when I watch the replay. I usually fail miserably. <laughs> you did good. You did good. All right, so I have these buckets. Um, I've had them for a long time. And on this metal plate here, let me show you this one. There was like a paper, I don't know, some kind of paper design. It had like carrots and potatoes and cucumbers. I can't, it, I can't remember what it had. It was like fruit and veggie kind of stuff on paper. And the paper I just peeled off. Um, there's still kind of some on there, but I sanded it down, so it's it's pretty smooth. But it's just a metal a metal tin. It gets rusty. You can see it's kind of rusty here. Um, but I cleaned it with some vinegar and water, and we're gonna we're gonna paint on it. And we're not priming it. We're not sealing it. We're just we're just painting. Crazy. So this is I'm crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so get your metal buckets out, guys, and start painting. Uh, so we're going to do a couple different things. So I think we're going to start with this one. And we're going to paint some metallic paint on these. So that one I'm going to leave kind of rusty and crusty. These I'm going to paint with some metallic paint. You don't need to seal the metallic paint. You are good to go with a couple of coats. But I just kind of wanted to get a little shimmer back on these. So... We're going to use Moonshine Metallic in Steel Magnolia and Deep Woods, okay? Steel Magnolia is like a, um, a uh, well, like a gunmetal, right? Like a gunmetal. There's a um, silver bullet that's more silvery. This one's a little more gunmetal-ish. And you always want to stir your metallics, right? <clears throat> Diane Castellano says, where'd you get the bucket? Diane, I've had these buckets. I got them from like a wholesaler. I don't know, Creative Co-op or somewhere, like years ago. Am um, I, am I pin, was I supposed to pin something? No. Okay. No. All right, so we're just taking a little bit of our Steel Magnolia. Uh, yeah, Steel Magnolia. And we're going right onto this bucket. It's already been cleaned. It was pretty dirty. These were outside too. So they're, they're kind of got that nice natural patina on them. And then I could, this is just gravel road on here. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I was actually trying the wood grain tool on it, but I couldn't, eh, I couldn't really get it to look the way I wanted to. Cause I thought I would do, um, 
like the fresh egg stencil, which I'll show you, over like a wood grainy look. But it didn't quite pan out. <laughs> so we're going to do gravel road with a white fresh egg stencil. But I want to get this on because we're going to do two coats of the metallic. We're going to let this one dry while we kind of move on to the next. We're going to do this in phases. Bug. Get off there. Is he dead? He probably came off the bucket. He is now. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he kicked the he bucket. Kicked the bucket. Or, or. All right, so I didn't paint this bottom strip yet. And I already painted the back two coats. So I wanted you to see what it looked like finish compared to the regular silver of the bucket. Okay, so it just brightens it up a little bit. Uh, so we're going to set that one aside. And we're going to break out this one. So this is the Deep Woods Green Metallic. You can also do a coat of paint underneath. Um, It'll make the metallic look a little different, a little brighter, but on the metal, I think it's going to be fine. Just do a couple coats. Nothing underneath. That little bug is still... Is he still going around? Still being a bugger. Little guy. <clears throat> Again, you want to make sure you stir your metallics up. Is there any prep to this? Like, as far as... I just cleaned him with vinegar and water. I mean, you could probably clean with white lightning and rinse them off and but they're going outside I'm not, not like super concerned about it so I just use a little vinegar and water but I'm not using any slick stick the metal this metal has a little bit of tooth to it um, so I don't really need slick stick on it now if you're doing like a real shiny shiny flat metal you might want to but i mean i did that one over there and it's fine it's fine galvanized metal tends to <clears throat> paint tends to stick to it fairly well well that's good to know so this one's going to be our chicken so i i painted and we'll talk about how i did this um I just took a couple different greens and some pine cone, and I kind of want it to look like a field because the chicken's going to be in front of it. So I just kind of dab some paint on, and we'll do the chicken right over it. Deb Oliver is watching, and Hi, she Deb. just wanted us to know that she, <clears throat> when she painted with her um, slick stick, or her, no, satin clear coat she used, yeah. She poured it onto a paper plate and did not <laughs> do it from the jar. Good girl. <clears throat> We're proud of you, Deb. Looks like the writing it 50 times helped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm just going over the back for a second coat. You usually need more than one coat of the metallics. Amber is asking, what if I have an old, and there it goes, <laughs> milk can that that has a little rust, can I just go straight over with the Dixie Bell paint? I mean, you know, eventually rust is gonna, it's gonna keep rusting. Yeah, rust, rust, rust. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, there's rust on these, I'm going right over it. You, you know, it really just depends uh, the longevity you want to get out of it. I think I did that already. <laughs> I'm like, is that right? Okay, so there's our green. We're gonna let that dry. Judy Donnelly says, want to see the chicken. <laughs> I know. We're going to see the chicken, I promise. We're doing the chicken and curl mustard. <laughs> All right. This is my favorite one. So we're going we're gonna to let this metallic kind of dry before we come back to do the stencil on it. All right. So this one I worked on earlier. And so this is what the bucket looked like, like without everything else on it, right? It's just regular metal bucket. Um... I took the truck stencil, so we're using the farmhouse silkscreen stencil. Guys, you get three different stencils in here. 
Um, in all of the silk screen stencils, there's three different designs. You can cut them up. Um, they're actually easier to use, I think, if you cut them up, because you don't have to even use the whole design. But that's the old truck part that I put on this morning. And you can see this is, um, what is that, variegated? What's that called? Variegated? Corrugated. 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 Like variegated. No. Variegated. That's, that's a plant. <laughs> <laughs> so it's corrugated. But these are adhesive, so I just stuck it in there and kind of pressed it in, and it came out fine. So we're going to put the rusty up here, and we're going to put the truck in the middle. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to get this kind of cool, rusty look. So this is painted on, right? That was not there. And to do that, we are going to use rusty nail, of course. We're going to use rusty nail. We're going to use terracotta, which I have a big jar. Um, terracotta is one of the ones that only comes in the 16 ounce now, but you can still get it. We're going to use a little pine cone and then some mermaid tail, right? Because when you kind of get that patina, it turns that kind of green color. Mermaid tail is perfect for that. I got a question from Missy who says, could you use this vinyl coated doors? I guess, could you use this on vinyl coated doors? Do we mean the stencil or do we mean the paint on vinyl coated doors? So on vinyl, you know, we painted vinyl chairs without slick stick. We painted them with slick stick. It just kind of depends on the vinyl. It, you know, if it's real, if it's a slick vinyl, you might want to put some slick stick on first. Um, just kind of depends. I just try to judge if something feels like it's got some grip to it or some texture, then I usually don't go with slick stick. Um, you're, you're always, you know, you can always do that if, if uh, to get a little extra insurance and comfort level. But I don't usually, I don't usually use it. When in doubt. Yeah, when in doubt, use it. Okay, so. Let's what kind of what kind of brush? Um, oh, so I rarely use this brush, but this is the French Kit by Dixie Bell. It's just a great brush for kind of shading in. It's just not one that I use a whole lot, and I'm trying to expand my Let me see this, my horizons. The brush. Yep. So it's a natural bristle brush. It's got a pointed end, and when you rinse these out, you can wrap them in a paper towel, a wet paper towel, and that will keep them from getting like real kind of splayed out. So I'm going to use the same brush for all these colors. Okay, I'm going to start with rusty nail, and. You don't need much because you're really just kind of doing some shading. So you put some paint on and then you offloaded it. I did because I don't want a whole lot. It's almost too much on there. I'm going to kind of spread it around. And I'm just almost like, like a wax. You see how I'm just kind of dry brushing it in and pushing it in? I'm using very little. And if I get too much on there, I'm just going to use it. Uh, I'm going to spread it around. So we're just going to kind of go around the edges. You're kind of going where rust would tend to form. Right. You know, around the hinges and, you know, maybe yes. here. And don't try to make like straight lines or anything. You know, rust is kind of random. Random rust. No, no OCD rust, only random rust. <clears throat> Rust is a natural process and nature does nothing in straight lines. <laughs> that is true. So we'll we won't go around the whole thing. I know we got a lot of little projects to do here, which is our which is our MO usually. <laughs> Try to fit 8 million things into a 45 minutes. Uh, we'll go down here too. Okay, so that's our rusty nails. You just answered a question. Okay. What's that? <laughs> is that rusty nail? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I say rusty nail, it's actually rusty nails. So apparently there's multiple nails in there, not just one. Well, one's just not going to cut it. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take some terracotta. Terracotta. And I'm taking the same brush. In fact, we'll just, we'll just use the lid. Is it singular or plural? Terracotta? Yeah. One. Just one terracotta? A terracotta. 
So just like a little bit, okay? Because we don't want to make, make the whole thing orange. And we're just going to go in on a little bit. And if you got, I don't know if Bill's close enough, but if you guys need to come in, you can. And we're just going to put a little bit of this lighter color. The best part is when the green goes on. <laughs> and this is, I'm barely putting any paint on, so by the time I get back to do the first part, it's already dry. So you can go right, go right into your next color. Gonna use a little bit of pine cone. Pine cone does not get enough love. So we're gonna give pine cone some love. <clears throat> Same brush, just going right into the cat. Doesn't get a lot of love because it's brown. <laughs> but what would you do without brown? It's a different brown. It's like a green, green brown. Green, greeny brown, I guess. Yeah, I like the color yeah. actually. You just very seldom see anybody using it. It's good for shading and things like that. You know, <clears throat> I mean, you rarely see someone paint the whole piece in pine cone. It's usually used as an undercolor or for some shading. All right. And now for the pot, a little bit of mermaid tail. For the pasty resistance. Make sure you stir it up real good. If you open your paint and there's like, looks like water or like some white settling on top, that's fine. Just stir it up, get all the pigments where they need to be. Truck paint is highly pigmented, so you gotta get it all consistent. I was gonna do that and then dip into the cap. <laughs> <laughs> so very little. All right, very little of this. Offloaded your brush again. Yeah. And I'm just gonna dab it because then I'm gonna swirl it in. Because you don't want a whole lot of this, just enough to show some patina on it. And if you feel like you got too much, just let it dry and go over it with another color. It's no big deal. No big deal. And be random. But look at that. Love that. We took a rusty bucket, cleaned it up, and now we're making it And making it rusty, it rusty again. <laughs> Why did we do all this extra work? Because it's fun. All right, I love that. So I'll do the rest of it too, but for tonight, we'll just work on the front. I did all that with one brush. It was so dry, I, you know, it, you can dip it in your other colors. It's not gonna, not gonna tint your other colors. All right, and then let's, let's do the truck, because I'm dying to do the truck. So we're gonna do a red truck fits perfectly in there. So I cut this, it used to say rusty old truck. And we're gonna peel off our silk screen. Um, I've never used this one before, uh, so it's super sticky. Peel it off. There's a little screen in there that we're gonna have to push our paint through. Okay, you gotta make sure your paint goes through the screen. Otherwise, <laughs> are you close enough? Yeah, keep it still. I just want everybody to see the screen. There it is. I can see it. I don't know if anybody else can. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> we're going to put it on there. Look how perfectly that fits. <laughs> Deb says, lucky me. Only one brush tonight. <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, no? One, two, three. Oh, that's right. She had to. We're already up to three. She had to paint all the gray. So we're going to press this down. Get the wrinkles out of it. <laughs> 
Missy says that she's been random all of her life, so this is a good project for hey, her. <laughs> awesome. No OCD. All right, so we're gonna use um, we're gonna use barn red for our truck. Make sure the lid's on before I shake this. <clears throat> Nothing screams farmhouse like barn red. Red truck. Barn red truck. All right. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, the silk screens come with this little applicator. So if you've never bought one before, when you open it up, this is going to be tucked in here. So make sure you don't like throw it out by mistake. And I usually take mine and I cut them up into smaller pieces. So that way I can kind of get into corners. And um, if you have a small, like this one, you know, if you have a small design, this, this is just going to be too big. You're going to get paint like all over the place. So you can cut them up. They're, they're like a credit card material. So question from Jesse. Yes. Do you press the stencil down on a towel a few times to get some of the sticky off? I don't. I, I, I like the stickiness of it and the stickiness is going to wear off over time. So I know, um, like with the, um, I forget the, the paint couture or chalk couture, whatever the other stencils are that they call transfers. I know they tell you to um, put them off on a tap, you know, to put them on your jeans or a towel. Don't, you don't need to do that with these. Not necessary. Miss, right. Missy, we got these pails probably a couple of years ago from one of our um, wholesale suppliers that we get some of our stuff from. Yeah. All right. So, um, actually, I probably could use. So, on, on this cor uh, corrugated part, I really couldn't use this. It would just be a little bit hard. Uh, so, I used a brush. This is smooth. I probably could have used this but I think I'm going to use the brush anyway. It's just a, the chip brush, the premium chip brush. And I'm really kind of pushing because you don't want the paint to sit on top of the stencil. That, won't, that, ha that doesn't even go through. So when you lift it up, there's not going to be anything there. So you're really going to kind of push. And then we're going to show you what to do as soon as you lift the stencil up. Because if you want these to last you, um, you know, for many uses, you, you got to take care of them. You have to clean them immediately, right? You cannot let the paint sit there in them and dry. So because I'm not near a sink, I have a bucket of water over here. Because it's going to go immediately into that water to get clean. And I didn't stick it down over here, so I may it may leak a little bit there. We'll see. And so we'll start. Peeling. There's a spot right there. That looks like it may not have gone through, or maybe the transfer is just pulling up, or the stencil. Yeah. So let me see. So peel up a little bit, and you want to make sure that your design is coming through. And on this one, I, I didn't even go all the way on some spots because I want it to look worn, but I still want to see the design. So we want to make sure we're getting a good, a good picture there. If I see it's not coming through, I'm, I would just put it back down and go over it. But I think, I think we're looking pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is so stinking farmhouse, I can't believe it. Okay, so take your silk screen. I'll bring, I'll bring the water over. Put it in water. And rinse it off. And the best way to do this is take a scrubby soap <clears throat> can't sing the praises of the scrubby soap enough. Yeah, it's amazing. Love that thing. So it's it's gentle enough to not rip apart your screen. You know, you don't want to use like, you know, a Brillo or anything like that. Um, but you got to get that screen clean. This is the non-sticky side that I'm scrubbing right now. Uh, and, and I think I've seen people say, you know, don't clean the other side. Or, you know, don't scrub the other side. Um, but I do. I get both sides because sometimes the paint will accumulate on the edge once it goes through. So I just kind of do a light 
cleaning of that side. So when it's done, take it out. Get yourself a Dixie Belle apron so you can do all this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to lay it sticky side up to dry, okay? So it's just going to sit there and it's going to dry. And when it dries, it's still going to be sticky, okay? If you do what I just did and you, you do it consistently. Save this because when that's dry, you're going to put it back on there. Okay, you got to have something to put it back on. So that is how you care for your silk screen stencils, and you should you should be able to get around 10 uses of stickiness, even when the stickiness wears off. You can still use them. You can still use them. Uh, all right, let's do let's do our rusty here. So this one I'm going to push down between the, the ripples here. And we're using uh, Bunker Hill Blue for that. That's kind of close. Should you tape that off? Huh? Oh, at the top? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. A little on that. Uh, try When, yes. you, when you cut the stencils, sometimes the letters are very close to the edge. And the last thing you want to do is have to clean off paint. That's where it's not supposed to be. All right, so there's that. And we'll just use... Um, we'll just use a small brush for this. Sure, use another brush. Move your hand. <laughs> and we're just kind of rubbing it in again because if you just go across the top, if you just do this, it's it's not going to go through the screen. Okay, so you kind of got to kind of got to push it. If you were going to use um, if you we're going to use the little squeegee. Isn't he a Mario Brothers character? Oh. So if you're using a squeegee, you just need a little bit on there. I don't know if it's going to work on here, but we'll try it. And you would just go across. Should it take the bottom? I thought you were talented enough to... <laughs> All right. I didn't think it was going to work on there, but I kind of wanted to show you... <clears throat> Pull it up, make sure we're getting through. Oh! Did you lean into the truck? I did. <laughs> I did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back down there because I didn't go through on that R. I'm okay with that. That looks bigger. Doesn't it look bigger on the stencil than it does there? The stencil looks bigger. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. Okay, so same thing, right? Right to the bucket. Right to the bucket. This goes in the water. And there is our rusty... Steel truck. I love that. Very nice. I love it. And I'm not, I mean, you could, you could seal it if you want to. You could use a clear coat. You could spray some clear coat on, but you don't, you don't really need to. All right. Um, so we do chicken next? Chicken next. Just make sure we can get chicken in. Yeah. All right. So this, I basically took a couple different greens on a, um, a plate 
uh, I used pine cone, farmhouse green, and tree frog green. I used the same brush and I just kept kind of swirling it in until it got kind of this soft pastel y uh, watercolor y look. And Making up words again. <laughs> Alright, so let's move that. So the chicken we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to cut. So this is the chicken. Um, he's he just fits. Like his feet might be a little <laughs> his feet might be a little cut off. We'll see. But I'm gonna cut this part off. Very carefully. And we're gonna cut this part. Yeah, I'd let his feet hang over. See how it kind of fits in there. I don't know if it fits up here. Well, I'm not, that's like clouds or something. I know, something. but it's, you're not getting, yeah. It's yeah, close. Good enough. We're on this kind of rounded, push it down. using kernel mustard. Now you could get creative, you know, and do a bunch of different colors. We just don't have the time to do that tonight. What's the blue color that you used? The blue. There. For oh, the... that was Bunker Hill. My favorite blue, Bunker Hill blue. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, should we try? Let me try yeah. this. Bunker Hill's not a metallic. No. All right, so we're just gonna put a little bit. Uh, you know, let me put some tape. Yeah, doesn't seem to be here. Whole thing seems to be bubbling up a little bit. And I'm not. I'm not worried about this part. Let's put some. Pulling up again. That's because it's on the edge. Yeah. I'll hold it down. <clears throat> so we're going to take and I'm, I'm pushing pretty good on here. Now, if you wanted a more chickeny look where you actually had like some different colors in there yes as long as you're gonna do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> chickeny chickeny okay <clears throat> you could use the brush right and use different colors yeah okay. just kind of blend them in yeah we can do his feet um and pine cone if you want yeah he's not going to be very colorful just because we don't have a lot of time that's fine he's, he's yellow that's good enough it's a bucket. Now I should do his, uh, should I do that in red? No. Just do it? Just, yeah. We gotta get to fresh eggs. <laughs> fresh eggs. So Rebecca asks, why are you using the plastic and not the brush? This is smooth. Um, so I'm just trying to show the applicator. Like the corrugated part, it's hard because, well, it's corrugated. But with the smooth part, you can use the applicator. Just showing everybody different ways all of doing things, it. All the things. It may not look great, but that's all right. 
Okay, so let's throw that in the water. Get these off. Big reveal. It's a chicken. Hey, we got a chicken. <laughs> we got a chicken. He would look cool with some colors in him. That's some pretty good detail. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, you could even, you know, maybe we'd add some. We'd add some letters at some point. Find local food. So. All right, so there's our chicken. Oh, I got it smudged here. It's all right. All right. Is it raining? No, I think we're back. We're back? <clears throat> yeah, we're back. Okay. Sorry. All right. all right. Lost connection there for a second. All right, the last one we're going to do is fresh eggs. Amber says we're freezing. Actually, it's really warm in Tennessee right now. It's brutal. So I don't know where she comes up with we're freezing. You know, I don't really want to cut that one because I think eventually I would want to use that. So we'll just put this on and we'll tape off the bottom. Now we're looping. We're what? Looping. What is that? Like buffering? Yeah, we lost we lost signal there for a second, but I think we're back. Are Nope. Amber, is everything back to normal? We good? It says Amber's watching. <laughs> All right. Debbie, Debbie Thompson says we're fine. Okay. And Charlie says we're still looping. Hmm. Can you go, uh, go out and come back in and see? Okay, so this one, we'll just kind of keep going and hopefully... The audio, Jesse says the audio is good, but we're still, like the video is still looping, but others are saying that it, it's it's fine. Okay. So, we'll keep going. we apologize. It's hard for us to see on our end what's happening. Yeah. All right, so here's our fresh eggs. I'm just going to tape off the bottom because we're not going to fit that on there. And we're going to use fluff on this one. Samantha says, I'm in Australia and you're fine. <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. All right, so we're going to use our little plastic. We're going to use our fluff. A couple of folks. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not how, what I wanted to come out. Oh, <laughs> a couple of folks. Good Lord, I apologize. <laughs> a couple of folks said they had to go out and come back in. <laughs> Good Lord. Facebook's going to ban us forever oh. now. That's hilarious. I wouldn't even really <laughs> notice it unless you said it. How, would, right. you, how would you not notice well, that? Kind that's of, awful. It was just like, oh. All right, anyway, we'll just keep moving on. And if anybody knows me, I do not curse like that. <laughs> I do not curse at all. <laughs> I'm probably the only Marine to not curse. <laughs> you, you can't say you don't I, curse at well, all. But yeah, you're not, yeah. you're not a potty mouth. No. Honestly, we've been married over 10 years. I, I'm, I think I've heard him burp once. <laughs> Seriously. He's just like that kind of guy. <laughs> And I'm sure that was an accident. <laughs> so who's going to try a silk screen stencil now? If you haven't tried them, give them a try. So the silk screen stencils just give you such, they can be so much more detailed they really are. than a regular stencil. Yeah. 
Um, you know what? There's an awful lot of paint there. <laughs> Ugh, I went way too heavy there. So we'll have to do some touch up there. Just that one spot. Yeah, a little bit there. Yeah. I think on this surface, I, I'm better off with the brush. Yeah, I think so too. Now, if you take this off, make sure you use the purple delicate tape and be really careful when you pull it off the screen so you don't tear your screen. Okay. Yeah, I just think you used a little too much paint. Yeah. So we'll let that dry. We can touch it up with some of the, this is gravel road painted on here. So we can uh, touch it up or not. I mean, other like, than, other than the, where it says eggs there, I love the way fresh came out. <laughs> it's got that just old, yeah. like it's been peeled, <laughs> like, like it's peeled off on its own kind of look. Yeah. So I like that one. So my favorite is still the truck. I'm actually not crazy about this one. I don't, I'm not, I'm not liking the color choice, I don't think. So I don't know, I may, I may do something with that, we'll see. But I love that one. That is my favorite. That's that, a good one. That might come home with <laughs> Robin Robin Hansen says, "So glad I saw this. I I first I just bought my first silk screen stencils, and she's been hesitant to use oh, them. Oh, fabulous! So yeah, don't be hesitant. Jump on in, girl. Jump. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, really. That? Who cares? <laughs> All right. Um, how are we on time? We good? I don't know. Okay. So in case you joined late, let me just again show you. Please take care of your silk screens." Quarter tail. Do not, okay, do not leave the paint on them as soon as you are done. Literally, like immediately. Put them in water. If you can't get to the sink, just put them in a bucket and get all that paint off. Get, get yourself a scrubby soap. These are perfect to clean these and just give them a rub. I'm gonna say what I always say about the scrubby soap. I thought it was kind of gimmicky until I had grease all over my hands from doing something around the store. I figured, well, scrubby soap is here, let me try it. It was amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's better than like lava soap or, or some of the other uh, pumicey types of hand soaps. But I, I mean, I wanna show, I mean, you saw how quickly I did that, putting it in the water. And the paint is still sticking onto the stencil part. It's coming, it's out of the screen. But you just, you just can't wait to do this part yeah. or you're going to ruin your stencil. And I'm flipping it over and I'm going to do the back because I can see some white around the edges and that's from my fluff. And if you don't get the paint off the edge, you're not going to get that crisp uh, design that you should get from the silk screen. Okay, so just, just take care of them really well. They're a great product, but they require, they require care. And then when you're done, put them face, sticky side up. Is the other side clean? Huh? The screen is, but the stencil's got some on it. Okay. Sticky side up to dry. And then save the, um, the backing, because you need to put it back on. Put the backing back. Sticky side on backing. Yes. Lisa Carpenter is asking who makes the silk screen stencils? Those would be Dixie Bell, their Bells and Whistles line where they have their silk screen stencils, their Mylar stencils, their decoupage paper. Do they have any stencils of bells and whistles? <laughs> no. No. Hmm. Yeah. It yeah. should be the chicken and truck line then. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. Doesn't sound as catchy. <laughs> Doesn't sound as catchy. And I almost forgot about this little strip <clears throat> under here. 
Ashley says, love scrubby soap too. Also BC, it, it has natural citrus oils in them and it moisturizes the Dixie Belle brushes. Guys, you, so there's a couple things you have to have. You have to have scrubby soap. You have to have a Dixie Belle apron. So get yourself a Dixie Belle apron. <laughs> For some reason, I think you just paint better in it. I don't know. Just, <laughs> it's just a thing. You got to get one. <laughs> Plus, show them what happens when you don't have an apron on. Yeah, so we're done, right? I think so, yeah. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, everybody looks like this, right? <laughs> Lucky Lavender and... And, gr and green. Boy, doesn't that look good on that blouse. <laughs> so anyway. All right, guys. Well, we hope you uh, learned something about silk screen stencils tonight. Um, please go support your local retailer. There's a link up in the description. Um, go to the Dixie Bell page. Put in your zip code. Find someone near you. You can also use our link, and Dixie Bell gives us a little bit um, to continue to buy products to bring you these great tutorials. So we'd love for your support if you don't have a, um, a local retailer. And we'd love for you to follow us on our page. It's at Country Living Newbie. And we have um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, a YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, come along on our journey with us. We would love to have you. And we appreciate you guys being here. Have a fabulous week. We'll see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central. Bye guys. <laughs>